I'm Chris Sanchez and welcome to Sonoma Views, where we talk real estate, property management, and local restaurant reviews. In this episode, I cover the 11 questions, 11 questions that you should ask a landlord when you're verifying a potential tenant's rental history or landlord history. Very important. Thanks for being here, so let's get started. First and foremost, the reason we do a rental verification or a landlord reference verification is not only to get information about um, how that tenant was as a tenant, not only for the landlord to verify their experience with said tenant, but the second reason is to verify the rental application that you receive and see if, basically if the tenants are lying, just to verify the information that these applicants are giving you compared to what the landlord says it is. So it's a two part process. One, verify their payment history, their tenancy, but also to verify the accuracy of the information that they put on their rental application before you decide to approve them. And I'm going to tell you, not only is it important to verify the current landlord information, it's super important to verify the previous landlord history if you can. So make it a point for that. And the reason for that is... Uh, if a current landlord is trying to get the tenants out, they may be likely to fudge or um, not give you the, the true, true information because they're actually trying to get rid of a bad tenant. Okay, so they might make the reference look a little bit better than it should. Whereas a previous landlord who is not dealing with them anymore is more likely to give you true, no nonsense, uh, real, uh, real reference, okay? That's a quick tip to keep in mind. So here we go with the 11, um, 11 questions to ask. Let's get started. Number one, what was the move-in date? You wanna find out the when the tenants moved in, when did their rental agreement or lease begin? Because again, you wanna verify that with the uh, rental application that you've received as a, as a potential landlord. You wanna make sure that what they stated on their application coincides with what the landlord says, current landlord says. If they say they've been living there for three years, your landlord should say three years, approximately the same move-in date. The move-out date is the second part of the number one question. Have they actually moved out or are they still present? Are they currently renting still? So in that case, it would be present. Number two, what is the monthly rent amount? Okay, so not only do I wanna know the monthly rent amount, does that include any utilities? Very important. Uh, in comparison, uh, comparing the, the two rentals and reviewing an application, you would want to know if, say, as an example, here's a reason. I'm going to give you the reasons for these. If somebody's paying $1,500 currently in rent with utilities included, they're getting a good deal. Maybe they're in an apartment. But if they're applying for a $2,500 rental, which is a single family home, and you're not including any utilities, then they're going up a thousand dollars in rent amount plus they have to come up with money for utilities so you want to be mindful of that when you're reviewing the application are you how much is their uh, expense going to increase their housing expense are they going to be able to afford it really number three did the tenant give you a proper 30-day notice what that means is if the tenant is in the process of moving out they're applying they're shopping around for other rentals did they give the landlord a 30-day notice, advance notice, which is the industry standard. It's courtesy. That's what they should do. They're instructed to do. Uh, so it's either a yes or a no, or they're still occupying the property, which many times um, the landlord is going to be the, the first time they hear about this. It's news to them. Well, you didn't know that they were looking for a rental, but you know they haven't given us a 30-day notice yet because they're still living in the property. So that's either a yes or a no, or they're still occupying the property. Number four, how many times did the tenant pay late in the past 12 months? Very specific wording. How many times did the tenant pay late in the past 12 months? Now, it's important to know how many times overall, but times change. I'm really looking, what, what has this last year been like? 
and by late payment, usually everybody's gonna have a different definition, but you could get more information when you're speaking to that current or previous landlord. What does late mean to them? If it's on the second or the third, it might be okay, um, depending on how, how lenient they were with the rental agreement says. But if they were paying on the 10th of the month and it was due on the first, that's definitely late. All right, number five. How many three-day notices to pay rent or quit? Very specific question. How many three-day notices have you posted, which are three-day notice to pay rent or quit? Meaning, did the tenant ever get into a position where they are so late that the landlord was forced to go give them a legal notice three days to pay the full amount or get the heck out of there? Okay, very important. And those are legal notices. Those are big deals. Number six, how many bounce checks? How many times did the tenants bounce a check or have a payment come back NSF, non-sufficient funds? Okay, you wanna know if there's been any return checks. Um, hopefully, in a good scenario, it should be one in 12 months, but it really should be zero. It should be a round number. So hopefully zero should be the answer, but Take that in consideration with payment history okay and that's a big no-no by the way um, if they don't have if they have the money they have the money if they don't have the money they don't have the money there are some tenants unfortunately who will uh, if the rent has to be in by the first or the second or the third they'll issue a personal check just to get the payment in hoping that it'll clear through over the weekend so that they can put money in the account but they didn't have the money in the account to begin with when they wrote the check so um, that's why cashier's checks are great money orders are great um, and there's other, other forms of payment as well. Number seven. Okay, this one is, it's tricky. Um, it's very direct. It's why are the tenants moving? Why are the tenants moving? On the rental application, um, a standard rental application, most of them are going to have the tenants current uh, housing, current residents, previous residents, previous residents, etc. And usually in the standard rental applications, it'll say, reason for moving. So when a tenant gives you a rental application for your rental and you're looking at where they've lived, how long they've lived there, uh, rent payment, etc., why are they moving? Uh, there should be a reason why they're moving out. And the reason I ask that is because I want to compare what the tenant put on the application to what the owner, the landlord received. They may not be the same. Sometimes uh, tenants will fudge the truth. Um, they won't tell you the, the whole truth on why they're looking to move out. Sometimes they'll just say relocate or need bigger space or looking for quieter space. But the landlord might say, oh no, they're moving because they were making trouble with the neighbors or um, it just wasn't a good, good situation. So I do that for comparison just to see how truthful the tenants are being. Okay. Also, that'll give you insight to whether the current or the previous landlord just they were trying to get them out. You know, they're they're moving out because they gave them notice to move out, not because the tenants moved out willingly on their own. Number eight. Okay. Are there any lease violations or complaints on file? Are there any lease violations or complaints on file? Yes or no. Second part of that question is: Are there any details you could share? So, lease violations, for example, are going to be noise disturbances, the police have been called out, loud parties, uh, parking in you know, red zones or parking in somebody else's spot, uh, having pets on the premises that they're not supposed to have in the premises, smoking in the property or on the premises when they're not supposed to be smoking, subleasing, they moved in people that they shouldn't have been in there. Um, you, you, lots of different things. Those are lease violations, things that they shouldn't do or complaints would be actually complaints from neighbors, nuisances, homeowners association, HOAs. Those would be uh, complaints, prob sometimes from neighbors, sometimes from HOAs, okay? So we wanna know if there are any complaints on file and then if the landlord could share any details to elaborate on that so you know what you're dealing with. Number nine, what kind of pets do they have? Now this is an open-ended question. I'm not asking, do they have any pets? I'm not asking, did they apply with any pets? 
what kind of pets do they have, all right? If the applicants, potential tenants, have on their application that they don't have any pets, and you're verifying, doing the landlord reference, and you're verifying it, and the owner says, oh yeah, they got two dogs, or they have a pit bull, um, or they have a dog and a cat, okay? Then you know the applicants are not, one of two things, uh, I hate to accuse without proof, right? But uh, one of two things, either they're giving up their pets in order to move into this property, which is not likely because a lot of, a lot of families consider pets part of the family. There's that much love, and I get it. Uh, so you wanna ask them what kind of pets? Just open ended question. And the, the landlord might know, they might not, but if your application says no pets and the landlord's telling you, yes, they have a dog and a cat, red flag. The second part of that question is, are there any problems? So any problems with those pets? And sometimes a lot of tenants that we get are what well, I consider trustworthy, they're honest, I verify a lot of information, and as they come through, all right, well, uh, what kind of pets do they have? All right, great. Now we're dealing with the same pets and if whether or not there are any problems. So you want to know that as well. Number 10, we're in the double digits now. Would you rent to this tenant again? That is such a big question. It's a simple question, but it's a big question. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to give this credit to somebody else because um, I receive a lot of um, rental references for our tenants. And one time, this is years ago, I just uh, I saw one, would you rent to this tenant again? It's a yes or no question. So after you've gone through all these bullet point questions, it's just black and white, would you rent to this tenant again? Hopefully it's an enthusiastic yes. And usually that's when, and you get that from a landlord, when the tenants are moving out voluntarily. That means the tenants, baby on the way, family's growing, now they have pets, now they want bigger space. So they're moving out on their own accord not because the landlord is kicking them out. So usually when a landlord is, quote, losing a good tenant, then say, yes, we would definitely rent to this tenant again. Now, I would say half the time, if not sometimes more than 50%, landlords will say yes, and then they'll put a little kick or a little caveat, if qualified. So depending on if they have another property, they might have to re-qualify for that property if the landlord happened to have another property available for those tenants to apply for. So they'll put, yes, they would rent to them if qualified. So that might mean a new credit report, new income verification, but um, if it's similar rent, then similar rent payment, then they should be okay. So would you rent to this tenant again? Yes or no? Very, very important information. And if you get a no, the landlord will not rent to that tenant again. Red flag, okay? Um, move forward at your own risk. Number 11. Are you related to the tenant? This is another one that I found uh, through the many rental verifications that I've filled out for tenants. And great point. Are you related to the tenant? Because especially if it's a current landlord and they're related, chances are they have more incentive to give a, uh, to make the reference look prettier than it really is and not tell you the full truth versus somebody who's not related. It's regular arm's length. They're just giving you a straight reference as it is. If they are related, um, as in family, then they're more likely to um, not give you a, a full accurate reference. Now, the other part of it is sometimes you'll have somebody renting with family okay as roommates so maybe they're renting a room you'll have a single person renting a room they're renting it from uncle or renting from parents you want to find that out and then maybe that person gets a boyfriend or girlfriend and now they're living together and now they need their own space well at this point they might be looking to move out but your reference it's only going to be so good because sometimes if somebody's renting a room they pay the head of household the person who's actually on the lease they just pay $500 cash and that's all it is so and sometimes you can't verify that so something to, to take into consideration if the landlord is a family member if they're actually related sometimes you'll have family members who have multiple rental properties and a family member is the tenant so again do they have payment history and are they going to give a uh, does a family member have more incentive to give a 
a super shiny positive reference versus somebody who is not related. All right, so there you go. 11 questions that you should ask when verifying a potential applicant's rental reference landlord history. I'm Chris Sanchez. This is Sonoma Views. I hope this information has been helpful in one way or another. If you'd like to receive future videos, be, please be sure to subscribe and you'll get a notification when there's new videos posted. If you have any questions, concerns, pop them below in the comments. If you're on YouTube, it's Sonoma Views. Put your questions below. I'll be sure to answer them. Happy to help in any way I can. And I'll see you soon.